Are you about to graduate? Are you feeling scared, anxious, ambivalent, or even terrified about life after graduation or just your future? <laughs> you are not alone. Thousands of you in 2022 are graduating and feeling exactly the same way. You are graduating into a pandemic. You are graduating into a competitive economy and workforce. I too felt so many emotions when I graduated from UC Berkeley in 2012 as we were recovering from the Great Recession. I was so overwhelmed that I postponed looking at job postings or beginning the job search before graduation. I just took a gamble and thought, hey, We'll figure it out afterwards, which, you know, is a bold move given that I had bills to pay. The process of graduating and looking into the future is an overwhelming experience. Hi, my name is Rosa Maria. I'm a career coach for young professionals entering the workplace. This includes recent college grads and first generation professionals. And my goal is really to help young professionals transition into the workplace mindfully and with intention. The big question this video answers is how do you manage all of the emotions that you are feeling in this moment as graduation is approaching, as you're receiving messages and advice from so many different people? What do you do in this moment? And my goal is to share three strategies and some insight into this phase of life. First and foremost, you must recognize that you are undergoing a transition. You need to identify it and you need to name it. A transition is a change or a shift from one experience to another. Transitions by nature are scary. They are anxiety producing because you're moving from a place that's safe and predictable to something uncertain and unpredictable. For some of you, the transition is going to be pretty clear cut. You will have a job lined up and you will know what your next step after graduation is. Others of you will have an uncertain path. Some of you may be unemployed. Because of the high level of uncertainty, it makes sense you would be feeling all of those emotions as you see and think about your future. More than half of you are probably questioning, am I choosing the right job, the right career path, should I travel? And to be honest, right now at this moment, I can tell you that there really isn't no wrong choice. This phase of life is pretty insignificant in the long scheme of things. So there is no wrong choice you will be able to pivot if something does not work out. But I don't want you to get lost in the feelings. I don't want you to get overwhelmed and choose not to take action. So the key takeaway at this moment is to be okay, to accept that this moment is scary, it's anxiety producing, it is terrifying to some extent, it's important to remember that you've already experienced a variety of transitions in your life. You've already done this before. I am sure that when you decided to go to college and you left your friends and your family and your predictable life for this new adventure, you were also questioning. You were wondering if you were fit for university level schooling or if, you know, it was going to be fun and you figured it out. So you've done it before and you can do it again. When I left my family to go to UC Berkeley for undergrad, I was terrified. <laughs> I was excited, but I was really sad and I was scared about life without my family and without my brothers. Unlike my peers who were very excited, they were not burdened with the cultural social expectations that I was. And so making the choice was hard, but it worked out. One action I want you to take so that you don't get lost in these overwhelming feelings is to create a mantra. 
I am not asking you to create a mantra about I'm going to be successful and I'm going to be rich. I want you to create a mantra that names the phase that you are in and that points to an absolute truth. Okay, these mantras are designed to ground you in the moment, remind you that you've gone through transitions and that you will do it again for the rest of your life and that this is just a phase. I'm going to give you two examples and we want these to be very simple, something that you can print. Example one, I am okay. I am going through a transition. I've gone through many transitions before and I can do it again. Another simple one. I was this anxious and nervous when I left for college, but I figured it out and I will do the same again. These mantras are connected to a truth. Pause the video and create the simple mantra that you're going to use as you go through this transitional moment. And if you're feeling courageous, drop it down in the comment section. I've got two more reasons why you're feeling overwhelmed. So don't leave after creating this mantra. You're feeling overwhelmed and anxious by this transition because expectations are weighing you down. You are likely feeling like Luisa from Encanto where all of these expectations are being placed on your shoulders you aren't vetting any and they're just piling on and piling on and piling on let's define expectation it's a belief that something will happen or that you will achieve something and college graduations are just moments where expectations pop up everywhere so if you don't vet the expectations that are being piled on your shoulders it's gonna get really hard in this moment, people, your parents, they're going to have a whole set of expectations. They're going to assume that you are ready to head to the races and that you're going to become a go-getter in whatever career or field that you're entering. But it's important to understand that expectations are heavy and add more stress to an already stressful situation. In this case, a transition. And honestly, at this moment in your career and life, it is important for you to vet these expectations before you try to meet them, carry them forward. If you do try to meet everybody's expectations, you may burn out. Expectations can burn you out because they cannot be standardized. The expectations that your parents have of you are different than the ones that you have for yourself. The expectations that your professional networks or that the leaders in your industry or field have, they're all very different. In trying to meet everybody's expectations, you run the risk of burning out really early in your career. And what we know is that burnout takes years to overcome. And honestly, some of you may be showing symptoms of burnout. If you were a high achiever in high school and a high achiever in college, and you've been powering through school, you may be experiencing symptoms of burnout. Burnout doesn't just happen in the workplace. It happens in your educational career as well. Symptoms of burnout include feeling unmotivated, being anxious, indecisive, uncertain, not finding joy in or excitement in maybe your interests or field or area. If you are starting to see these types of symptoms, talk to somebody on the college campus before you leave. So we'll, what do we do? We're going to identify them and name these expectations and then we're going to decide which ones of these matter and which ones do we want to meet. Okay. Grab a piece of paper, top to bottom line in one in the middle. And I want you to put parents, self, society, culture, and then you can add any other ones that are unique to yourself. So I am going to go ahead and share mine expectations when I was graduating in 2012. As I mentioned, I'm a first gen college student. So the only expectations that my parents really had of me is that I could find a job for graduation after you know going through four years of schooling. The secondary expectation was maybe if I could move back home or at least move back into the city so they can see me on a daily basis. I, on the other hand, 
had different set of expectations. I was graduating with my master's of social work and management and planning. The expectations was that I could find a job that paid me 50,000. It also limited my range. I intentionally decided that I wanted to find a job in the Bay Area and not in San Francisco or out of state. I also wanted to work in the nonprofit sector. And so I had three important expectations. These were the top priority criteria I was using to make decisions. We'll come back to society, but I'll go to culture. The expectations around culture came to returning home and being close to family and friends. For a lot of immigrant groups, um, parents want their kids back home. <laughs> If you ain't coming home, then the other option is that you're getting on a path to getting married and having kids and meeting those personal milestones. While graduation may be a little bit too early to be thinking about that, those are the cultural expectations that I was receiving. Obviously, those were not important to me, so I let them go. Society, because we were recovering from the Great Recession, Honestly, the main message was like, good luck. I hope that you could find a job in this competitive job market. <laughs> you are competing with professionals who are laid off in 2008. As you know, time went on, there was more of an expectation that you go into the startup sector. Now it's going to the tech sector. So based on who you are, what your industry is and your field, write out the messages that you're receiving and see if if they matter to you, are they of value? I want you to pause the video and respond to the questions and then we'll continue. So for parental expectations, what do your parents expect from you in this transition? It could be as simple as having a job or it can be as descriptive as find a job that pays 100,000 for a very specific company. Self, what do you expect of yourself in this transition? Society, what are the societal messages that are coming your way? And messages come from media, from professional networks in particular fields, from mentors, from peers. I want you to separate culture because culture is a little bit different than societal expectations. So based on your culture and your ethnic or racial identity, what are the expectations that people have of you? What cultural expectations are you expected to meet, if any? Let's name them and see how they all differ. I want you to select the most important ones. Having three to four is probably the best that you can do. And those expectations are the ones that I want you to write down. And when you have to make a lot of decisions, you look at these expectations, these criteria, these goals, these objectives that you wanna meet during this transition and say, this is what matters. And everything else may be important, but you can push it out until a year from now. And it could be as simple as finding a job to help me pay the bills. A key takeaway from this section is to remember that you will be working for a lifetime. So you've got plenty of time to work. And it is okay for you to find a job that helps you pay the bills and gives you the time to be intentional. But honestly, you just make the best decision that you can. When you get into the job and you're doing the job, that's when you will know if you are in the right industry, in the right sector, in the right company, you will become very discerning about what you like and don't like. And you will be able to make decisions and be able to pivot into something that aligns more with your values, your skill sets and your identity. So understand that this first job matters to pay the bills but it doesn't have to be as important or life um, altering the last reason you may be feeling so anxious can be because you don't have clarity because you have not developed a plan like any journey any project any endeavor that you take on in life <laughs> you need a plan if you haven't already written out a plan for this transition, it is time to do that. You need to know what the next few weeks or months are gonna look like post-graduation. Here's some simple questions you can respond to. How do you plan to spend the first month post-graduation? Is it getting onboarded to your job because you already have a job? 
or is it going back home and spending a month with family and resting is it traveling for a month have you already assessed what tools and resources you have what tools and resources you need it's important to put all of this information into a work document because you need to get things out of your mind onto paper to understand what the gaps are what's missing in this plan think about your transition as a solo hike you are going on a hike you need your plan or your map and tools and resources to help you get to your destination safely and prepared. So the first step really is getting this plan, this map out so that you can make any decision that you're gonna be faced with in the next few weeks. So to summarize, I want you to develop a mantra about this transition to ground you in a truth. I want you to prioritize the different expectations that you are carrying. You need to vet it all and decide what matters to you the most and add that to your plan. And I want you to develop a plan for this transition. The goal is that you take everything out of your head and uh, put it on paper. Subscribe to the channel because more videos are coming on how to make this transition seamless or at least reduce the stress. And if you have a very particular question, drop it down in the comment section, okay? Talk soon.